As I'm sure most of you have probably noticed by now, YouTube isn't quite what it used to be. A platform once praised for its freedoms in what you could say and do, now corporatized and warped almost beyond recognition. Countless creators over the years have lost the will to continue on YouTube due to the sheer amount of limitations on the kind of content they are allowed to make. For the first 11 or so years, YouTube was for the most part quite unrestrictive on what creators could and couldn't say or do in their videos. You putrid fucking cunt! But come 2015, things started to change. There are a lot of reasons for these early initial changes, and it had a pretty strong effect on a lot of creators leading into 2016. But as late 2016 approached, things really took a turn for the worst. Some of you may recall the term adpocalypse. This was in reference to the time in YouTube's history when countless different companies started voicing complaints or pulled away from YouTube as they felt uncomfortable being associated with specific creators. While YouTube ads are of course targeted based on the kind of video being uploaded and the user watching, some ads do slip through the cracks and may find themselves placed on a video their company may not feel comfortable with. The ad apocalypse and subsequent heavy censorship of YouTube was sparked almost completely by one single event and person, that being the one and only PewDiePie. In late 2016, PewDiePie uploaded a video that would change both his career and YouTube as a whole forever. The video was focused on the website Fiverr, and PewDiePie paying creators on the website to provide a service, typically a funny video request of some sort. Most of these requests were rather harmless at the end of the day, but Felix wanted to see how far he could push the bar. He ended up paying to have a couple of guys hold up a, let's say, questionable sign while telling the audience to subscribe to Keemstar. And to their credit, I suppose, they delivered. Because of how sensitive YouTube is to stuff like this, I can't really say what it said, but let's just say it was fairly anti-Semitic. I'm sure if any of you were there at the time, you remember exactly what it said. Despite the obvious regret in Felix's face and him apologizing immediately in the video, things did not go over very well with the blossoming internet hate crowd of the time. This one event was what triggered the dreaded adpocalypse and overall pushed YouTube into a new and worse era. And how could it not? The largest creator at the time posting something like this? As harmless as it may have intended to be, it was not a good look for the platform. Despite the fact that PewDiePie deleted the video and would go on to apologize again, it didn't matter. After this one event, YouTube would go on in the next handful of years to radically alter their policies on advertiser-friendly content, taking it to extremely unnecessary lengths. While a bunch of creators lost their steam and drive to continue doing what they did, there were a lot who tried to fight the system and keep doing what they loved. Of these brave warriors, there are few as fondly remembered, or who went to greater lengths to fight the good fight, than these few creators. Wheels is an upstanding, upsetting citizen. Except for one problem. He can't get any pussy. Not with that wheelchair. There are very few creators in the history of the platform who left as large an impact and has missed as much as Filthy Frank. Edgy and Filthy Frank are more or less synonymous in the YouTube sphere. In his time on the platform, there was really no line that George would not cross. From his various personas across his videos, to his often ridiculous and, frankly, pretty insane sense of humor, there was nothing that George wouldn't do to deliver a funny video, and more specifically, one that could top the previous in terms of shock content and humor. And while he was most known for his persona of Pink Guy, Filthy Frank had a plethora of different roles. While most were all more or less just different versions of insane people, his range, both in terms of characters and vocally, was actually really impressive. Some of his funniest videos, and subsequently the ones that would go on to be deleted, were the Cake Trilogy. Those of course being The Vomit Cake, Hair Cake, and The Human Cake. I'm not gonna lie, even just typing this script at the moment, thinking of these videos is kinda making my stomach curl. These videos were, yeah, pretty vile but it was the sheer lengths these videos went to, while still actually being really funny, that made them as memorable as they were, especially at a time when YouTube was really starting to crack down on this kind of stuff. What's more, it's not like big creators of the time were against this kind of video, as the Human Cake video in particular actually had a lot of different YouTubers come together to contribute, including the likes of PewDiePie, Vsauce, KSI, and more. Filthy Frank was loved by almost all of his peers, which really says a lot about George as a person. While Filthy Frank sadly stopped uploading in 2019, marking an end of a really funny era, 
George himself would go on to far bigger and better things with his now very successful music career as Joji. Seeing George use his YouTube success and go on to make content he actually likes far more, and from what I've gathered is also a lot less physically and emotionally taxing, is amazing, especially when you realize that was his goal from the very beginning. While music is subjective, and not everyone may like the kind of music that Joji makes, I personally am quite a big fan of his, and seeing his passion shine through in his talent is great. What makes it all the more interesting is that Joji's best songs are admittedly really sad. Having someone who once made us laugh as much as he did, now making us capable of crying, truly shows George's range of talent. Filthy Frank may be gone, but if the trade-off is Joji, then I think that's okay. Another heavy hitter of the era was a good friend of Frank's and appeared in a lot of videos of his, that being iDubbbz. iDubbbz was arguably more edgy than Frank was, at least in terms of the kinds of things he would say. If you know, you know. Many of you probably remember the style of humor iDubbbz had with videos like his bad unboxings or his oh-so-famous content cop videos. I personally found iDubbbz for the first time with his hilarious Leafy content cop video. Much like Frank, when YouTube was really starting to fight content like this, iDubbbz pushed through even harder with his style of content, and needless to say, it was most definitely not catered toward the algorithm or toward advertisers. But either way, the views speak for themselves. So while YouTube itself was very much against this style of humor, it was clear that the actual YouTube sphere was not. In my opinion, what makes iDubbbz an interesting case is that he then did what a lot of YouTubers seem to be doing now, which was calling out others for their double standards and disingenuous beliefs. This is shown most clearly in the infamous Tana Mojo Mangi, Mango, Mango, I don't know how to say her name, in the Tana Content Cop video. Whether you agree with iDubbbz's methods of going against this is another story, but either way, he was pretty trend-setting with that kind of content. While creators like Keemstar would just feed off drama, iDubbbz sought to just destroy the viruses that were infecting the platform. Again, whether you agree with how he did this is up to you. Eventually, much like Frank's videos, a lot of these original content cop uploads would be taken down. As of now, however, it looks like all of them are back up except for the Leafy video, which is a shame as I think it was probably the most funny. These days, Ian doesn't make videos like that anymore, which is too bad, but honestly, at this point, there isn't much of an audience for it, and even if there was, YouTube has made making money on videos like that almost impossible, so it's understandable why he too packed up and moved on to other content. To start, take your Napa cabbage and dice it using a sharp knife. <laughs> The thumbnail may show our good chum Max Mofo, but the truth is I never actually really watched him much outside of Frank's videos. That said, I of course understand his place in the edgy YouTube history, and thankfully I can say he's still going strong on the Cold Ones podcast alongside Chad Roberts. There is someone else whose name, and as far as I know, face, nobody knows. I'm referring to the absolutely insane How to Basic. Now, some of you may not consider How to Basic edgy and more so random, but his content still falls under the umbrella of not being YouTube friendly. I don't have a lot to say about him, honestly. His content was and remains very unique, to say the least. There isn't even a lot to say about it either. It really just kind of speaks for itself. How to Basic still uploads and actually still gets pretty good views, all things considered. I really have no idea how much longer he can last, as I can imagine such a career is pretty exhausting, but at the very least, he's still around right now. When it comes to edgy creators today, there's still a few to choose from if you look around. However, there is one specific YouTuber who I think takes the cake nowadays when it comes to disturbing and funny content, which is exactly what edgy should be. What's more, not only is he consistent with uploads, but it's also all animated content, which makes it even more impressive. You may know him as Meat Canyon. What's there to say about Meat Canyon? His videos are somehow a mix of genuinely frightening, sometimes enlightening, sometimes just completely random, and other times extremely uncomfortable. Actually, most times extremely uncomfortable. It's parody content taken to the next level and then some. Much like Frank, Meat Canyon is pretty loved by basically anyone who knows him, recently putting up a video featuring a lot of different YouTubers to promote his merch. Getting this many big-name creators isn't something that would be possible if you aren't genuinely liked. 
Channels like Meat Canyon continue to carry the torch of edgy and off-putting content on the site, as more and more creators just throw in the gloves and either quit or seriously censor themselves for the sake of the platform. While the 2010s edgy era may be gone, there is still some hope with the endurance of shows like Cold Ones and channels like Meat Canyon. They are proof enough that edgy content on YouTube still has a place. Until next time, I'm Sir Surgenor, and thanks so much for watching. Peace!